Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul, and this is part three, an introduction to JavaScript in a web viewer. In this video, we'll explore the perform JavaScript in a web viewer script step. In our previous two videos, we were performing text substitution that was putting our FileMaker values into the actual source code that we were displaying in the web viewer. And then we set it up so that it would perform a function, and that's how we got the JavaScript result. The difference with this script step is that we're going to load the source code first, and then we can perform a function, and at that time, provide our FileMaker values as parameters in that function. All right, so let's jump right in. This is where we left off in our previous video, where we were using substitution to put our FileMaker fields into JavaScript variables. So we first did it up here where we brought in the external JavaScript file using substitution and then placeholders for text1 and text2 that we're putting into these JavaScript variables of text1 and text2, which then get called down here where the actual comparison happens. So our goal in this installment is to get rid of substitution altogether and only use the script step perform JavaScript in a web viewer. To pass our values with this script step, we need a JavaScript function that has script parameters. We don't have that right now. That's not the way this was set up. Diff main has script parameters, and that's basically what we're doing. We're feeding our variables in as parameters to diff main. One of the nice things about JavaScript is we can just define our parameters right here. So we have text one, and text two. And by doing so, we're doing the equivalent of declaring that this variable exists. The catch with including a parameter is if you don't include it, the function won't work. And I'll demonstrate that quick. I'm going to remove these two. And when I copy this and I jump over here into FileMaker and I paste it, we're going to see that it doesn't work anymore. The reason we don't encounter issues like this in FileMaker is because it won't let us save a calculation if we have forgot to include a parameter. Now in order to make this work, we're going to need to create a script step to populate those parameters. So we open up the script workspace and I'm going to create a new script. We'll call it diff.js and we're going to perform JavaScript in a web viewer. Now we need an object name. In JavaScript, there are things called object, but this has nothing to do with that. This is the name of the web viewer where the function exists that we're going to call. Now we haven't named our web viewer yet, so we need to go do that. So we go into layout mode, click on our web viewer, go to name, and we'll call this diff web viewer. So we go into browse, we go back into script editor, click on our script, our script step, and we're going to put in our object name. Now our function name, we've been using this the whole time. You should be familiar with it. It's launch. And we only need to put in the function name, not the parentheses. Our parameters are defined in their order. So the first one is text1, and we'll click on a plus. And we click on the calculation and we select text two. And that'll get you the absolute bare bones that you need to make this work. So if now we go and we run this script, we'll see that it works. Now this is context sensitive. So we have to have navigated to the correct layout before we start talking to this web viewer. And the web viewer needs to be named appropriately. Now the second criteria is that this web viewer has to already have HTML and JavaScript loaded before we try to talk to a function, right? I mean, that makes sense. In previous videos, we were using this calculation field because we were creating the code and loading our FileMaker values into the actual code. But if we look into our calculation field, text two and text one, these are no longer relevant. However, up here, this JavaScript, we still need to bring that code into our web viewer. If we leave out of here and go into browse mode, we can actually go into this JavaScript global field, copy it, 
and then highlight our JavaScript placeholder and just paste it. Now we have no need for any substitution. So now if we go into layout mode and we go into our web viewer, instead of referencing our calculation field, we can just reference the HTML global field because it has everything we need in it already. So if we go into browse mode, and we go up and we run the script, we'll see that it works the way we expect. There are a few different ways we could get the code into the web viewer. We could also store all the code directly in the web viewer. But before we do that, we'll need to copy it, put it in a text editor, and we need to escape out the quotes. So if we go into find mode, we find all the quotes, and then we put in an escaped quote, and then we replace all now we can go into the web viewer and remember to put this inside quotes because this is a text string and now our escaped quotes will appear as quotes in the HTML and they'll display properly so if we go into browse mode and we go up and we run our script we'll see that it works properly now the advantage of this is it gives you a standalone layout object that you can copy between layouts and between files. But you'll notice this no longer works the way it did in previous videos. If I leave a field, it does not update the web viewer. But we can restore that functionality by putting in a script trigger. So I can go into script trigger and then on object save and I select my diff JS, hit OK, and then I do the same thing up here for text one. Object save, diff JS. And now when I go into browse mode, if I make a change and I tab out of the field, you can see up here that the change is now reflected. Third way to go about this is we could use a global variable and use insert text to avoid escaping quotes or making any changes to layouts or schema. We can point this script at any web viewer in our solution. So let's go to diff.js. We're going to add two lines above this step. In the first one, we're going to create a variable and we'll make it a global diff, remember two dollar signs for global, and then we're going to use insert text, and we're going to target that at our global variable, diff, and then we're going to just paste our code right here. So if we go back in, and we go into our web viewer and we select all and we put our global variable in here and we go back into browse mode and we make a change because our trigger will fire we can see that it works as expected we can take away from this that a javascript function operates quite similarly to a filemaker custom function in that what we name the parameter becomes the variable that holds that value and that is available for the calculations that happen within that function. And that's how we get our FileMaker data into a web viewer. Additionally, we need to have our source code loaded up into the web viewer before we call this function. So we've got like, we've got subscribe, and we've got the bell. So I hope to see you next time.